Labor Code on Employees' Compensation. Meaning of Employees' Compensation. Employees' Compensation is a benefit given to employees who suffer disability or death arising from a work-connected injury or illness. Remember that it is not the injury or illness that is compensated, but the resulting death or disability. Thus, even if we're connected, the injury or illness will not be compensable if it did not result in disability or death. When is an illness work connected? An illness is work connected, one, if it is classified as an occupational disease, or number two, if not classified as an occupational disease, the risk of contracting the disease was increased by the working conditions, death or disability arising from illness. Note the compensability of death or disability arising from illness. Death or disability arising from illness is compensable 1. If the illness is classified as an occupational disease or 2. If not classified as an occupational disease, the claimant can prove that the risk of contracting the disease was increased by the working conditions. Note the relevant doctrines. The increased risk doctrine. There is increased risk if the illness is caused by or precipitated by factors inherent in the employee's nature of work and working conditions. It does not include aggravation of a pre-existing illness. It is not required that there should be a direct causal connection between the disease and the employment. All that is required is reasonable work connection by showing that the development of the disease was brought largely by the conditions present in the nature of the job. What if there is a relapse of illness? After an employee has fully recovered from an illness as duly certified to by the attending physician, the period covered by any relapse or recurrence of illness resulting in disability shall be considered independent of and separate from the period covered by the original disability. When is an injury were connected? An injury is work connected if it is sustained, one, at the place where the employee's work requires him to be, or two, while performing official functions. Death or disability arising from injury. Note the rules on compensability of death or disability arising from injury. Death or disability arising from injury is compensable if the employee's injury was sustained, one, at the place where his work requires him to be, or two, while performing his official functions. Let's mention some relevant doctrines. Personal comfort doctrine. Disability or death suffered by an employee while ministering to his personal comfort, such as satisfaction of his thirst, hunger, or other physical demands, shall be deemed to have arisen out of and in the course of employment, hence compensable. Going to and coming from place of work doctrine. Disability or death resulting from an accident while the employee is going to or coming from the workplace is compensable if number 1 the employee has not been diverted by any other activity or 2 has not deviated from his usual route to or from his workplace the bunkhouse doctrine where the employee is required to stay in the premises or in quarters furnished by the employer, injuries sustained therein are deemed to have arisen out of and in the course of employment regardless of the time when it happened. Hence, it is compensable. Doing work at home doctrine. Disability or death arising from injury sustained by an employee while doing work at home is compensable if the work was done upon request or direction of the employer. The mingling of purpose doctrine. Disability or death arising from injury sustained by an employee while on a trip undertaken for the benefit of the employer is compensable even if, in the course thereof, the employee pursues a personal purpose. The shuttle bus doctrine. Disability or death arising from injury sustained by an employee while enjoying the means of transportation provided by the employer to and from the workplace is compensable. The special engagement doctrine. Disability or death arising from injury sustained by an employee while on recreation, such as outings, field trips, intramurals sponsored by the employer, is compensable. Special errand doctrine, disability or death resulting from an accident while the employee was performing a special errand is compensable if the special errand was official and in connection with his work. 24-hour duty doctrine, 
A soldier on active duty status is considered on duty 24 hours a day because he is always subject to call and to the orders of his superior officers at any time, except when he is on vacation leave status. Thus, the moment a soldier dies or sustains a disabling injury, it is presumed that it arose out of his employment. However, it is still necessary to establish the evidentiary details of the injury or death through the duly authorized representatives of the hospital where the soldier was brought for medical treatment. Disability or death of military men while on pass. Disability or death arising from injury by a member of the military while on pass for a period not exceeding 72 hours is compensable. If the soldier was unable to report back for duty after the 72-hour period, the disability or death is still compensable if such failure to report was due to legitimate and valid reasons, such as fortuitous events or force majeure, provided that there has been no unjustified deviation from the conditions for the issuance of the pass. Disability or death of military men while on rest and recreation Disability or death arising from injury by a soldier while on rest and recreation after having gone on actual combat duty is compensable because rest and recreation after actual combat duty is considered part of a soldier's military activities. Disability or death while on vacation leave Disability or death or disability arising from injury sustained by an employee while on vacation leave is not compensable. The reason is, an employee who is on leave does not perform his usual duties. Disability or death caused by failure of employer to install safety devices. Death or injury caused by failure to install and maintain safety devices shall hold the employer liable to pay the state insurance fund a penalty equivalent to 25% of the income benefit of the employee concerned. Disability or death caused by third party. Disability or death caused by a third party is compensable if the requisites for compensability are met. This means that the employee or beneficiary can claim compensation from the SSS or GSIS. The SSS or GSIS, in turn, may recover from the third party whatever compensation it has paid to the employee or beneficiary. If the SSS or GSIS can recover more than what it has paid, the excess shall be delivered to the employee or beneficiary after deducting expenses incurred in the recovery. But the employee or beneficiary cannot recover twice for the same injury, that is, from the third party and from the state insurance fund. Note the factors that bar compensability. The employee or his beneficiaries will not be entitled to compensation if the disability or death was caused by the employees 1. Intoxication 2. Notorious negligence or 3. Willful intention to injure or kill himself or another Intoxication To constitute a ground for denial of compensation, the accident or injury must be shown by clear and convincing proof that it arose out of his drunken condition and not because of his work. The degree of intoxication must be such that it rendered the employee incapable of doing his work. Intoxication, which does not incapacitate the employee from following his occupation, is not sufficient to defeat the recovery of compensation even though the intoxication may have contributed to the cause of the injury. It must be shown that the intoxication was the proximate cause of the death or injury. Notorious Negligence Notorious negligence signifies a deliberate act of the employee to disregard his own personal safety. It is more than mere carelessness. To constitute a ground of denial of compensation, the negligence of the employee must be notorious, as distinguished from simple negligence, carelessness, lack of foresight, or contributory negligence. It must be shown by clear and convincing proof that the notorious negligence was the cause of the injury or lack of foresight. Willful intention to injure or kill oneself or another. The reason for not allowing compensation for death or injuries arising from willful intention to injure or kill oneself or another is because the injury resulting in disability or death was not caused by the employment but by the employee's own voluntary act.